blood typing lab. Before we begin, let's do a quick review of the antigens that are on the blood cell. If you're blood type A, you're gonna have antigen A. If you are blood type B, you're going to have antigen B on your blood cell. Remember, antigens are like little flags that say, hey, I'm that blood cell. If you are blood type AB, remember, you have A and B antigens. There's no such thing as an AB antigen. So there's the A flags, A antigens, and then the B flags, B antigens. And if you're blood type O, remember O's the ninja. There's no antigen, so no blood recognizes it. Okay, now let's review the antibodies that are floating around in your plasma. So if you're blood type A, in your blood, you have floating around anti-B antibodies. For blood type B, you have anti-A antibodies floating in your plasma. And if you're AB blood, you don't have any antibodies floating around in your plasma because you have both antigens, so you're not against anything. O blood is the complete opposite because it doesn't have any antigens, so it's against everybody. So it's against A, so we have anti-A antibodies, and we're against B, so we have anti-B antibodies floating around in the plasma. Now for the RH antigen. So if you are RH positive, that means you have the RH antigen. And if you're RH negative, that means you don't have it. So let's look at an example. If you're AB positive, you'll have the A antigen, the B antigen, and the RH antigen. Okay, now let's take a look at the blood typing pre-lab. Pause the video and write down what you think, then use your annotation pen to make any corrections. So for blood type A, you should have written antigen A on the red blood cell, an anti-B antibody in the plasma, blood type B, antigen B, an anti-A. If you're blood type AB, you're gonna have the A antigen and the B antigen, and floating around in your plasma, there will be nothing, so write none. And then for O blood, you don't have any antigens on your red blood cell because you're a ninja, so write none. But you do have anti-A and anti-B antibodies floating around in your plasma. Now let's look at blood donation. If you have B blood, that's one we're gonna look at, there's gonna be anti-A antibody in the plasma. We're gonna look at the different blood types being donated. Let's start with B as the example. B is donated to B, so no agglutination is gonna occur. That means clumping. If I put A into B, then yes, agglutination is gonna occur because we have anti-A antibodies that mark it for destruction. Same thing for the A negative. B doesn't want A to come in, so yes, agglutination will occur. But if you're going to put B blood into B blood, then no agglutination is going to occur because it recognizes it as the same. A, B is a little bit different. The B is recognized, but the A isn't. So there will be agglutination. It just won't be quite as much. Same thing for the other A, B. The B will be recognized, but the A will not. So yes, agglutination is going to occur. And then O or ninja, if you put a ninja into B, no agglutination is gonna occur because it doesn't recognize it. There's no antigens. All right, now pause the video and try to fill in the rest of the chart and then I'll go over the answers with you. Okay, so now looking at A blood, if A blood goes into A blood, there's gonna be no agglutination because it recognizes it. Remember, A blood carries the anti-B antibody, and so if it's against B, it's not against A, so we're gonna be fine. If you put B into A, well, we have the anti-B antibody, so yes, agglutination will occur. Same thing for the other B. So B into A, yes, agglutination will occur because of the anti-B antibody. For AB blood, the A is recognized as being the same, but B is considered foreign because of the anti-B antibody will mark it for destruction. So yes, some agglutination will occur, and it happens again with the other one. A is recognized as A blood, but the B um, causes agglutination. For O, our ninja can always go anywhere, so no agglutination will occur. 
Now you notice for none of these did we talk about the positive and negative. So let's make sure you guys know that negative can go to negative, negative can go to positive, but positives cannot go to negatives. Okay, so this is gonna be for the next section. All right, if we're looking at negative blood, so you can see the blood cell doesn't have anything on it, all right? Negative blood, so the anti-RH antibody is floating around in the plasma, and that's your little key to refer to. Looking at the positive, going into a negative, can positive go into negative? No, so agglutination will occur. What about negative going into negative? Another way of saying that is nothing going into nothing, so no agglutination will occur. How about positive going into negative? Yes, agglutination will occur because of the RH antibody that's floating around in the plasma. And what you guys should be noticing is that there is a pattern here. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, all the way down because negatives can go into negatives, so no agglutination will occur, and positives going into negatives will cause agglutination because of the anti-RH antibody. So go ahead and fill in the rest of the chart. This lab is using Carolina's synthetic ABO blood typing kit. Now you're gonna need four trays labeled one, two, three, and four. The synthetic blood that we're using is labeled sample one, sample two, sample three, and sample four. We will be using three serums, anti-A, which is blue, anti-B, which is yellow, and anti-D, the RH, which is clear. You're gonna need something to stir with. I'm using six toothpicks. To begin, take sample one and tray one and put a drop of blood into each tray. Do the same thing with sample two and tray two, one drop into each well. And then continue with tray three and sample three. While you're doing this, make sure the tip of the cap isn't touching the well and that you're closing the cap after each one. And then finish up with sample four. Take a second and make sure each well is labeled A, B, and RH as you can see. Now, taking the blue anti-A serum, put one drop into each of the A wells. Now, take the yellow anti-B serum and put one drop into each of the B wells. Now, take the clear anti-D RH serum and put one drop in the RH well. Now, this next step is super important. You are going to mix each of the wells, but you wanna make sure that you're using a different side of the toothpick for each well, otherwise you're gonna get contamination. And since you have three, six, nine, 12 wells and six toothpicks, you can use both sides of the toothpicks to stir each of the wells. You should be able to tell quite clearly that some of the wells are agglutinating and some of them are not. And make sure you throw away those used toothpicks. Okay, now it's time to go to the data table and record our results. Okay, so looking closely at each well, we're gonna write whether agglutination occurred. So yes, if it occurred, no, if it didn't. The first A well, there was definitely agglutination. Let's look at the B well. What do you think? Agglutination? Nope. What about the RH well? Definitely agglutination, so yes. Then you're gonna take this information and go up to the top of the chart and figure out which blood type we're looking at. So if you're doing yes, no, yes, it's A negative. And just like with the other tables, I'd like you to pause the video and try to fill in the other charts and then I'll go over the answers with you. Okay, now sample tray two. Let's take a look at the A well. What do you think? Did you say no? How about the B well? Oh yeah, and the RH looks a little clumpy, so we're gonna say yes for B, agglutination, and yes for RH. So which one is that? Up, oh, B positive. Is that what you got? All right, let's look at tray sample three. A, oh boy, yes. B, yep, can you tell? RH, no, so yes, yes. And nope. So what is yes, yes, no? You find it? Yes, yes, no? All right, there's our A, B, negative. All right, and then our final tray, sample four. 
tray four. A, what do you think? Can you tell? B, RH, I can't tell. Let me stir. Oh boy, yes. So I'm going to say no, no, yes. No for the A, no agglutination. No for the B well. And yes for the RH well. Yes, agglutination. So where is no, no, yes? There we go. No, no, yes. What blood type is that? O positive. Is that what you got? All right, well, now it's time to answer the post-lab conclusion questions, and then I'll go over the answers with you. Okay, let's begin with question one. At 1 a.m., someone breaks a window in the back of a store and robs a safe. On the way out, the thief cuts himself herself on a piece of broken glass. You are a forensic detective called to the scene. You test a sample of blood left behind by the thief. It is O negative. While you're there, take a look at the crime scene, O negative. While you were there, police bring in a suspect with a cut forearm who was arrested just three blocks from the store. You take a sample of the suspect's blood, mix it with anti-A serum. You immediately know that the suspect is not the person who cut himself on the broken glass in the store. How do you know this? Okay, pause the video and answer the question. Okay, so at the crime scene, we know that we have O negative blood. So there's no antigens on the red blood cell, but the suspect's blood, we put anti-A serum in it, and we know immediately that it's not the suspect. So there must be an antigen on it that's reacting with anti-A. Well, who is A against? A is against A. So the blood must have agglutinated meaning the A antigen was present on the suspect's red blood cell. That's the only way it would agglutinate. This would not happen if the suspect's blood was O, since there's no antigen. There'd be no reaction. So your answer should say something like, the blood must have agglutinated, meaning A antigen was present on the red blood cell, the suspect's red blood cell. This would not have happened if the blood type was O because O doesn't have any antigens on it. Number two. Suppose the suspect's blood does not agglutinate when tested with anti-A or anti-B, but does agglutinate when tested with anti-RH. Would this connect the suspect with the crime? Explain your answer. Again, pause the video and answer the question. Okay, so you should have answered no. The blood left at the scene was O negative. And if you're putting anti-A or anti-B and it doesn't agglutinate, but it does agglutinate with RH, then we know there's no A antigen, there's no B antigen, but there is an RH antigen. So the blood of the suspect was O positive and the blood at the crime scene was O negative. So they would not connect the suspect with the crime. So on your sheet, you should have written something like, no, the blood left on or at the scene was O negative. The blood of the suspect was O positive, so they were not connected. Okay, question number three. Tom and Jane participate in a Red Cross blood drive. Both are first time donors. As part of the screening process, their blood is typed. Tom is A positive, Jane is AB positive. What blood group antibody is found in Tom's blood? Okay, pause the video and mark your answer. The answer is anti, what, what'd you put? Because Tom is A, he must be against B. So anti-B antibody. What blood group antigens are found on Jane's blood cell? Since Jane is AB positive, she has the A antigen, the B antigen, and RH for the positive. Four, Tom and Jane's blood donations are sent to a processing center where their blood cells are separated from their plasmas. Both their separated cells and plasmas are then sent to a hospital. A blood researcher wishes to use Tom's blood in an attempt to extract and identify the A antigen. Should she attempt the extraction process on his blood cells or on his blood plasma? Circle one. And the answer is blood cells because that's where antigens are located. If you wanted to find antibodies, that's when you would look in the blood plasma. 
Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining Warren Science. Don't forget to clean up.